if you've never been to Oberlin, Ohio, um, it's a small city. It's a college town, uh, but it has a big history. It has a big past. Not only is it over 188 years old, uh, but Oberlin is also a sanctuary city and one of the main underground railroad sites uh, for the Northeast Ohio. Um, something you don't really know about Oberlin is that it's pretty haunted. There is many sites around town, and many people around town that have claimed that uh, either their shops are haunted, their residences are haunted, There's a lot of talk around town. So of course, you know, I want to learn more about this. I want to learn more about these hauntings. I want to know if they're tied to the Underground Railroad, uh, the slaves that have came through the city. I want to know if there's something else that's uh, bringing that many uh, ghosts or unexplained phenomenon. I want to know if it has anything to do with the sanctuary city, the age of the city. I just would really want to investigate more into why that is. The trouble I'm having is actually finding people that want to talk about this. Well, it's a pretty gloomy day today. It was raining earlier and I expect it to be raining some more later. But we got some good news. Through a mutual friend, I was able to get a hold of a, a gentleman who lives here in Oberlin that has talked about having paranormal experiences in his home. So I reached out to him and uh, he's agreed to let me come over there and interview him. So I'm really excited about that. We're going to head over there now and see uh, you know, if we can't get some answers. So let's head over. So as I started heading over there, it, it began to rain, and um, I got a couple of things going on here. I'm very nervous because this is the first interview I've had on this subject here, and I'm also very excited because uh, I actually get to talk to somebody who has real experience with a sort of phenomenon or or haunting or, or paranormal, things like that. and. I'm trying to compartmentalize my questions that I'm going to ask him. Um, I have my scrap note, you know, piece of paper that I'm gonna use as my kind of bullet points. But also, depending on how the interview goes, you know, it could lead to additional questions or things like that. So, um, yeah, let's see how how this ends up. So now, now I'm really excited. He has agreed to do the interview and uh, I just need to bring in my, my camera and lights and uh, let's get started with the interview. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Tuck. Thanks for meeting with me. Um, I, I know, you know, Bobby gave me your name and I really appreciate you meeting with me. Uh, there is a curiosity around here in Oberlin with uh, so much paranormal or unexplained phenomena and things like that. Um, can you tell me how long you've lived here in this house? Um, I lived here for the last nine years. The previous owner was my uncle who lived here for 60 years and my grandmother lived here before he did. So the house has been here for almost 80 years in our family. Wow, that's awesome. Um, do you believe in paranormal or unexplained phenomena? Um, I didn't until I moved in here. I didn't believe in ghosts or whatever. And yeah. then once I moved in here, a lot of strange stuff started happening, which made me kind of believe in ghosts or whatever it is. Okay. Um, do you know anyone else who experienced this paranormal or unexplained phenomenon around here in Oberlin? Um, 
Not that I know of, but it's normally not a top of conversation. I mean, I don't really go around and ask people if they've seen ghosts. Yeah. Do you? Oh, the lights just turned off. Yeah, that happens all the time. It's, it's a normal occurrence around here. Oh, wow. Um, do you believe that there is any connection to the Underground Railroad or because Oberlin has always been a sanctuary city or anything like that? Or do you think there'd be something else? Um, it could be because this house was moved Lights here. Just came back on. Yeah, that's, that's no more for you. Um, this house was moved here. It wasn't originally here, it was moved from another area. Yeah. So before that, this space was occupied. I think it was part of the Underground Railroad before it was moved here. This space was. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, so I got to jump off. So the lights, they, they turn on and off by themselves a lot. Yeah, they the lights turn on and off. And strangely enough, I used to have a truck outside and the radio would play at night. <laughs> and then uh, sometimes the windshield wipers would come on and off. And eventually I got rid of the truck because I didn't want to deal with that. Anymore. Wow. What other things sort of happen? There's the lights again. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the interview and turn on my light because I, I just wanna keep the light balanced. Okay, sorry. I had my light set up. I didn't know it was gonna be so gloomy out with the rain, but um, I didn't know we'd need it, but now we do. So uh, that's crazy. Okay, uh, where was I? Have you ever seen anything uh, manifest like a, a shadow figure or anything like that. Yeah, sometimes when I'm in my room sleep, I feel like there's somebody in there watching me. But I know that it's the only people that have lived here are relatives, so I'm pretty sure it's one of them. I'm pretty sure it won't be nobody else. Nobody else has ever lived in the house since it's been here except for my family. So I know it's a family member. That's why it doesn't bother you. That's why it doesn't bother. You. Has there has there been any sort of uh, you know, like um, where they've hurt you at all or no. attacked you. No, like I said, it's family members, so that doesn't really bother me at all. I mean, if I, if I have somebody else owned the house other than my family when I was here, if I would. It have been a problem. The door just closed over there. Yeah, I don't know. that. All this stuff is normal. It's not. It's an everyday occurrence. But I, like I said, oh I, I know it's a family member, so it doesn't really bother me. They probably know you're here and wonder what you're doing here. That, I just gotta say this is amazing, cause like, I've never, I've always heard of it, but I've never, even just the lights going on and off, you know, I've never experienced anything like this. This is, you know, I'm kind of freaked out a bit, actually. Well, they ain't gonna bother you, they're fine. Um, one last question. Uh, how long were you living here before the activity started? Um, it wasn't very long because oddly enough, and this is my, when my uncle passed away, I moved in on that day. It was May the 5th, it was 2012. He died on May, the, I moved there on May 5th and then when I went to see him in the hospital, I told him I moved in and later on he died that same night. So after that, I kind of, you know, after being, it was kind of strange with him not being here, but then I felt like he was here. That's awesome. I got to tell you, uh, I, I, Mr. Tuck, I certainly appreciate you taking your time to meet with me today. And you know, this is a quick, short interview. I am trying to gather information from, you know, residents of Oberlin of any sort of paranormal activity or unexplained phenomenon. And uh, this is, <laughs> you know, just the lights of the door. This is pretty amazing, and you know, I'm, I'm sort of freaked out, and I just want to thank you for sharing this with me. I, I really do appreciate it. No, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. I just got home, and I'm getting ready to go through all the footage, and uh, I don't know what happened. My, my battery died in my camera. My battery died in my cell phone. I had to get back home and recharge everything. I got, this is one of the, the scariest things that have ever happened to me. I was really freaked out. Um, and I think he could tell that I was getting freaked out. And he was just calm as could be. So it's really strange. But um, I got to find more people to talk to. I know there's more to this story. Uh, 
to be continued.